All his life, this brilliant artist strived for high social position and glory. He created the whole portrait gallery, kings and jesters, princesses and dwarfs, courtiers and priests. The king of Spain who admired his painting said, My artist became the mirror of our life. He was born in Seville in 1599 in the family of Hidalgo, Juan Rodriguez de Silva. The talented boy was sent to the studio of the artist Francisco Pacheco. Under the guidance of his teacher, Diego perfected his technique of drawing that allowed to reproduce models precisely. And in the house of his teacher, the young artist found his wife. It was Pacheco's only daughter, the 16-year-old Juana Miranda. After taking his professional exam, Velázquez got the diploma of the painter and started his own workshop. Once the young king Philip IV saw one of his pictures and immediately decided to get his portrait done by the artist. The monarch was impressed by the work. He not only liked the portrait, but also took a liking to the painter. The 24-year-old Velázquez became the court artist of the Spanish king. Philip granted him a salary of 20 ducats per month and accommodated him in the best apartments of the royal palace. Now, Velázquez didn't depend on casual earnings, but he had to devote most of his time to the court ceremonial. Besides, the plots of the paintings were limited to the depiction of the royal family and courtiers. Philip IV patronized the artist during all his life. In spite of the fact that there were six more painters at the court, only Velázquez had the right to paint portraits of the king. Soon the artist became so popular that at the court it was considered indecent not to have a portrait created by Velázquez. But at the same time, in Spain in the 17th century, the aristocracy treated even the most famous artists with a slight disdain because they had to earn their living with their hands. This attitude offended Velázquez's pride, and all of his life he tried to reach the higher status at the court. At the age of 30, Velázquez made his first trip to Italy. He visited Venice, Rome, Naples, where he copied pictures by Tintoretto, Michelangelo's frescoes, studied ancient sculptures. The Italian king did not have any doubt that the Spanish king sent them a spy in Velázquez. But in spite of the suspicions, the artist was warmly received in Rome, and he was even invited to stay in Vatican, where he won the respect of all. After his return, Velázquez worked a lot. At first his picture, The Forge of Vulcan, appeared. It was followed by the magnificent battle painting, The Surrender of Breda, numerous images of the members of the royal family, and a series of portraits of dwarfs and jesters. Soon Velázquez was promoted again. The king appointed him as the chamberlain of the court and chambers, then the master of the royal wardrobe and the king's valet. At the age of 45, the artist was ordered to renew the interior of the palace in Madrid. He persuaded Philip IV to let him go to Italy to buy paintings and ancient statues for the royal chambers. In Italy, Velázquez was warmly received and admitted to the Art Academy of St. Luke. In Vatican, the artist painted one of his masterpieces, the portrait of Pope Innocent X. The Pope was so much impressed with the extraordinary talent of Velázquez that he even asked the Spanish king to consider in favor of the artist's request for the knight title of military order. Velázquez, full of enthusiasm, didn't hurry to leave the hospitable Italy in spite of the calls of Philip IV to return to Madrid. The king, who didn't want to lose his favorite artist, made him the supreme court marshal, and only then did the painter leave Rome. Three years after returning to the Spanish capital, Velázquez painted the most difficult portrait of Philip IV. The fatigue and disappointment in the king's eyes weren't covered with either the pride or the usual haughty expression. During the last ten years of his life, 
the artist painted numerous portraits of the Infanta Margarita. He depicted this small, fair-haired girl whom he loved very much in one of his most famous works, Las Meninas. With Philip's consent, the artist showed the royal family in unofficial surroundings. In this canvas, he depicted himself for the first and last time. Velázquez's court career reached its height during those years. The king awarded him the highest order of Spain, the Order of Santiago. For the first time in the history of the country, an artist became a knight of one of the oldest orders. In the end of July 1660, the painter suddenly got ill. The king's doctors couldn't help him, and on the 7th of August, Diego Velázquez died at the age of 61. In honor of the brilliant master, the posterity erected the monument with the unusual but very informative epitaph, to the painter of truth. <laughs>